uh, we are we um, I, I have been trained uh, to know that vines could be very lazy. If you feed the vines on the surface of the soil with fertilizer, with water, they are not, they are not interested to go deeper and to have more relationship with the soil and cross different soil layer, but they just stay there waiting for our, let's say, help. And uh, the wine that we, we have, uh, for me, is, uh, let's say, not completely pure in terms of expression of the vintage because rainfall are uh, balanced by the irrigation. This is the different point of view from, uh, from let's say, uh, old wine region, Italian wine region. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I like to think that the climates are similar between Napa and Montalcino, but of course, we have significantly uh, higher drought pressure, um, yeah. which is so. Lots of people would love to be dry farmed in in California, but it's just not feasible, uh, especially over the last decade, and it's and it's going to continue continue to get worse. Yeah, yeah. But even here, it's uh, something very frustrating. Uh, for example, 2017 uh, and 2020 were very, very dry. And, um, but the, the first step, I think, is um, try to understand that, for example, uh, each vine, each vineyard is making grape in according of the vintage and uh, in according of what they can offer and what they can produce that year, this year. And um, this is why, for example, all our single vineyard are never the same quantity. Year by year, they can even double or being half quantity because uh, are linked with the seasonal trend, with the rain. And uh, that's for me, the picture of the year that I'm looking for into the wine. Excellent, excellent. Sorry, uh, just real quick, we wanna welcome everyone to the uh, benchmark uh, Rager Cellar conversation. We have uh, Sebastian from Sebastian Nacello from a winemaker and CEO of Poderi Le Ripi with us today. And we will be discussing three different wines uh, from Poderi Le Ripi. Uh, 2016 Sonia e Folia Rosa di Montalcino. We have a Amore e Magia 2015 Brunello di Montalcino and a 2013 Lupi Sereni uh, Reserva Brunello di Montalcino. And if anyone would like to buy today's wine, head on over to Benchmark Wine Group at www.benchmarkwine. There we go. The link is right there for you in the chat. Great. And Tom, you, you know, Montalcino is the hot, hot spot of Sangiovese. And uh, Sangiovese, let's say, is in our blood, is uh, perfectly adapted to our, to our heel. And uh, this, is, this is one of the reasons that I, I have and I why I love so much Montalcino because uh, Sangiovese himself doesn't have any very clear personality. Uh, he behaves like a kind of mirror. He's able to go really deep in the sense of place and tell you the story of the vintage and the story of the soil. And uh, this is why he's a variety, very demanding into the vineyard and able to really, really go behind the the, the wine making program and be very linked with the, with the terroir, with what's going on into the vineyard, more into the cellar. And, uh, and Montalcino is, uh, is spectacular for that because we age the wine five years, we work 100% Sangiovese, and uh, this is uh, incredible because uh, it's a long time to <laughs> into the cellar to spend with the wine, to list in the wine, to understand what, what the wine needs. And at the same time, we have to be very, let's say, respectful uh, of the of the single vineyard of the of the wine in order to let let the wine blossom and bloom some in some way. You know, it's it's a very slow process. Sangiovese is low into the vineyard, has is low into the cellar. Uh, ripening could be very late in September, October, and wine Sangiovese into the cellar in Montalcino spent five years. It's a very, very long cycle. And this is the beauty of Sangiovese. And so you mentioned one grape. This is the Sangiovese Grosso. 
clone, yeah. is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Rosso is the, uh, let's say, the clone of Montalcino because Sangiovese is more or less everywhere in Tuscany, but the only place in Tuscany where wine is 100% Sangiovese by rule and uh, we have a proper clone and uh, is very linked with the place is Montalcino. And Montalcino is a little middle-aged town over a little hill. That's the, the picture. And uh, we, it's, 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 we named this place uh, the Valley of Montalcino, but as you can see, it's not a valley, it's a patchwork of hills. And uh, it's incredibly green and it's full of, let's say, biodiversity because um, of course, wine is our core business, is our tradition, our, our soul, but all around Montalcino, there are vineyards surrounded by forest, by olive groves, by fields, by little lake. There is a bit of everything. And this makes our, our wine region so spectacular in terms of landscape, but also very, very healthy and very biodiverse. And this for, for sure help our, our mission because as Podere Le Ripi, we, we are really focused in uh, biodynamic farming and uh, biodynamic gives the best when it's not a monoculture uh, system, but when you, have, when you are enriching the environment where you are playing with different plants, with different animals with, and keeping everything incredible alive. And this is uh, what we are trying to do. Um, Podere Le Ripi is a, let's say, is a little winery with 34 hectares split in two different locations of the, of the valley, of the Montalcino hill. And uh, if you go, if uh, showing the next picture, I will show you this, 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 this hill. It's a kind of square. And uh, in the middle of the square, we have, a, we have a hill that is 600 meters high. And the vines and the vineyard are all around the hill, but we completely different positions. This is why when we talk about Montalcino, when we talk about uh, Sangiovese uh, and Brunello, we have to recognize a different location inside the, Montalcino, the Brunello di Montalcino area. And in, in our case, our vineyard are split between the east side, where we have the most precious single vineyard that we are going to taste tonight, and on the west. And are completely different because not just the soil, but also this position. On the east, we play with the sunrise. On the west, we have more sunset uh, ripening of the grape. And, and, and this makes the wine different. And Sangiovese is able to go so close to the details, to the, to, to the natural uh, uh, variable of the veneer that can, it's, it's itself is able to go let's say very, very, to be very unique and very different year by year, vineyard by vineyard. And, and this little hill that seems a square is to give you a number is each side is about 15 kilometers. It's not too high, too big. It's, uh, everything is very close, but between the north and the, and the south of Montalcino, there are four weeks of different difference in terms of ripening. This can give you an idea how the Sangiovese behave and be is sensitive to the climate, to the microclimate, not climate, and to the different condition of farming. Of course, showing the, uh, the previous picture, we, Montalcino is, uh, is, is, is very particular also for the position in our in our uh, country because it's not too far from the ocean and uh, this kind of position help the climate to be influenced by the ocean but not too hot and at the same time cooler during the winter we have let's say four seasons very uh, defined with completely different uh, trend and uh, rainfall and temperatures and this is typical for a Mediterranean uh, place like, uh, like Tuscany and is, uh, is so important for, for, for our health viticulture. Uh, I would like to show you the picture number two that help you to understand where we are. Okay. Um, this is our winery. 
if we can say winery, because <laughs> for, for my point of view is a farm. Uh, most of the winery in Montalcino were farmhouse because uh, making wine in Montalcino is tradition, is a, is a, is a lifestyle. And for centuries, uh, uh, the, the farmers were in this little house in the middle of the nature, in the middle of nowhere, uh, producing uh, everything from themselves, living off the land. This is why uh, if, you, if you come in Montalcino, you will never see a vineyard too big or, or many, many hectares of vineyard complete in, in, in large space. But every vineyard is, let's say, placed in little corners surrounded by different plants. And inside the, the farmhouse, inside the winery, we don't have only vineyard, but we have a bit of everything. For example, in Podere Le Ripi, we have the, the we have a very large uh, garden. We have uh, the, we have bee, we have animals, and uh, all this stuff are for sure uh, are for in our in our way to 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 make wine are important because uh, we want to we want to enrich uh, our surroundings. We want to keep everything healthy and uh, biodiverse and very let's say vibrant because uh, this is the only way to make our work and our business sustainable. We want to do wine now, but we hope to make wine for other centuries, at least hundred years. And uh, if we take the land and we push the land to make grape without taking care about the, the environment, the, the whole environment, maybe farming could be too stressful for the, for the place. And, uh, and this is what we don't, we don't like to do. This is why, yeah, we, we really engage the nature with all our time and all our effort. And, and to spend just a few words about biodynamic, uh, it's really focused in the fertility of the soil. First, first point, we keep wine and fruit and soil free from chemical stuff. Number two, we do uh, all our best to grow organic matter in the soil. Let's say more than farm the vines, we farm organic matter because we know that when the soil is alive, when the soil is harmonious and is, uh, uh, let's say, vibrant and full of energy and natural forces, for sure the vines will stay better and will be more healthier, with deeper roots, with more efficient roots, and able to do better grape. This is why biodynamic is important. And at the same time, looking for the pure expression of the vintage and the vineyard, in, from my point of view, biodynamic farming is the least, uh, let's say, in, in the, 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 the technique that I can have, I can use to make wine with a lower interaction. I don't want to build anything. I don't want to grow anything. I want just escort the wine, the grape and the wine after up to the glass. And uh, I know that the quality is there is uh, thanks to the place, thanks to this very old soil. And uh, my, my, my role is just be respectful and understand what I have to do, put myself in listening of the, of the place and of the wine. And we have some questions, I think so. And allora. yeah, we biodynamic farming uh, take care also of the moon and uh, of the, let's say, astrology. For example, now today, yesterday we bottled Brunello 2017 and uh, we decided to bottle with a uh, uh, some specific day, more uh, with a moon that is, uh, uh, let's say, getting closer to the ground, to the earth, and with specific condition. Uh, it's part of the biodynamic because uh, when, when your place is clean and is very sensitive to the nature, also the moon can make some little difference. That's the point. And to show you the soil, that is another very important point, I will go to slide number four. And here you have the soil. 
To understand Montalcino, we have to know that Montalcino is an ocean hill, rise five millions of years ago. And the ocean uh, influenced the soil of Montalcino a lot because uh, to, under, to, to define and to, let's say, to, um, to the, the key factor of Montalcino is the clay. Uh, comparing Montalcino with other Tuscan um, terroir and soil, Montalcino probably is the hill richer in clay, in ocean clay. This is why soil in Montalcino are heavier. And uh, this is why Montalcino and Sangiovese from Montalcino normally taste deeper and very structured and very layered into the mouth. And this is thanks to the clay. We have three main bands. This means that if you take the hill of Montalcino and you split the hill in three different levels, we are going from the lower levels where the soil is younger, is more rich in silt and is not, uh, let's say, so uh, unique in terms of geology and uh, normally is very suitable for higher production and very enjoyable Sangiovese. Going to the middle band, we, we will enjoy more clay from the ocean, very rich in limestone with a very high pH, able to stress the vine, able to make the vine more focused into the fruit and make the wine more tasty, savory, and a bit salty sometimes when it's very well made. And from the top of the hill, we, we are going to have more rocky, more rocks like galestro or, or even lighter soil, richer in sand and very old clay too. And this is why in Montalcino, normally the best wine are coming from middle bed and top of the hill and are two very particular condition. Tom, if you want to, we can also start to talk about the wine that make you maybe is help, helpful for, the, for our guest. Absolutely. Uh, would you like to start with the Rosa de Montalcino? We're looking at the uh, 2016 uh, Sonia Ifolia. Uh, Real City Montalcino. Yeah. And you want to talk about the 16 vintage at all and how that uh, shaped up and how that influenced uh, what you did in the vineyard with this wine? Yeah, allora, Montalcino, in Montalcino, the vintage is a very important factor. We, we can say that um, having, uh, like we, we, we say, like I saw, I say you, uh, relay only in dry farming and in natural rainfall, um, the amount of rain that we have during the year, the seasonal trend of the weather are very important. And uh, they are part of the expression of the wine and they're part of the identity of our wine. This is why there are completely different vintage. Uh, of course, uh, it's a matter of taste because you can have a hotter vintage with lower rainfall and uh, normally very generous, very full body, very, let's say, fruity, and um, normally from hotter vintage. When the vintage is cooler and more humid, like 2013, the wine tastes very different because uh, Sangiovese can offer this finesse, this uh, elegance, and this very slim taste typical of uh, Sangiovese in Montalcino. And, uh, and, and both are very, for me, I like, let's say, sons. Uh, I can say which is my favorite, but uh, I like when each wine tells the story of himself and his vintage and his soil. Uh, Sonia, the first wine that we are tasting is from 2016. 2016 is considered uh, nowadays the best vintage of Montalcino in the last 10 years. And um, why? especially because it was very slow in uh, September, October, with very high difference of temperature in, uh, in, during the harvest time. And this helped a lot the Sangiovese to develop more aroma and, uh, and to develop more, uh, let's say, finesse. And, um, and, and 16 was like that, it was a, a regular vintage during from April to up to August and after the temperature uh, cooler down and the ripening can get very slowly up to the hand. 
and uh, this make us able uh, to pick the grape very a bit later and very uh, peaceful and without the rush. And this is why Sangiovese from 2016, Brunello from 2016 are considered uh, long live, long live wines. Uh, Rosso di Montalcino, the wine that we have, is, is the little brother of Brunello. Is a pure Sangiovese like Brunello, but normally coming from the youngest vineyard for the less important vineyard and normally uh, vinified to be more drinkable and more enjoyable sooner and um, like something that you can taste and drink faster. In our, uh, in our state, we do Rosso di Montalcino from the west side of Montalcino Hill. We have a little plot there where we grow uh, some vineyard biodynamically. And uh, from there, we do this pure Sangiovese for Rosso di Montalcino. Uh, to be, to give you all our information, uh, normally Rosso di Montalcino is not aged. It's a very young wine and normally rest is like, is ferment and refine uh, only in stainless steel. It's, uh, um, it's difficult, it's, it's very rare that you find a Rosso di Montalcino with a long aging. But in Podere le Ripi, by tradition, we, we always did a Rosso di Montalcino with a pretty long time in the big barrels. And uh, this and is- big barrels are, sorry, are you using, uh, what type of oak are you using? Where, is it, where does it come from? We use big barrels from uh, Vosges. Vosges is a small Alsace, in a forest in Alsace, in French. And um, as you can see, Montalcino split his style between modern and traditional in according of the sides of the oak that you use for your Brunello. Uh, there are winery more focused in small French barrels, barrique, and winery more uh, focus and uh, on, on big cask. I love personally big cask because uh, are slower. They allow the wine to take more time to find his own harmony and to, and to find uh, a better, better balance without having too much micro oxygenation and, uh, uh, and uh, without uh, so what we are very careful is uh, uh, don't use too much new oak because Sangiovese being so shy is, uh, is very easy to cover by the oak fragrance. And this is why we, uh, we prefer big cask and mostly old barrels. And, um, and, and this is Rosso di Montalcino. Normally, Sogno Folia is pretty drinkable. It's a wine that can stay uh, even five, six years in the bottles without problem. And uh, most and of sorry, how do you, uh, what's the translation of the name, Sonia e Folia? Sonia Folia is a dream and foolish. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, nice. And um, yeah, and it's, uh, and this wine offer the expression of the west side of Montalcino. It's a bit uh, cooler, uh, more with the mouth that is uh, enjoyed is very vibrant acidity uh, and this very linear body that makes the wine very drinkable. Uh, for many, this Rosso di Montalcino is something very similar to Brunello because staying five years in the, it's not five years, but three years in, uh, in Big Cask, uh, uh, it's very close to Brunello di Montalcino, but uh, it's just our choice. And then, and then a year in bottle as well? Or how, I, long, how long will it, it, it age in bottle before release? Normally between eight and 12 months. Okay, excellent, excellent. And we have a comment here from Ed uh, about you saying, uh, Sebastiano is the best of the new generation of Montalcino winemakers. He is a genius. No, it's not true. And uh, I, I really enjoy this Rosso. Like you said, it is uh, extremely complex for, for a Rosso and not just something that is uh, meant just for easy drinking. It's, it's extremely enjoyable, but it's, the complexity is, is fantastic yeah. and, and truly just deep tones of, of what Montalcino can do. Yeah, it's... Uh... 
for us it's important that the wine has uh, his own time to refine because uh, bottling the wine without filtration, without uh, stabilization, we, we need uh, to let the wine live uh, few, few years in the cask with uh, the cold temperature of the winter, the bit hotter of the summer, in order to complete all the fermentation and make all his deposit and get the stability, stability naturally uh, to be ready for, 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 the, for the glass. And uh, it's, uh, it's our own choice and, uh, and, 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 and I like it, yeah. In, if, you, if you want, we can also go for wine number two is uh, Amore Magia, Brunello di Montalcino. And finally, we are with Brunello. And um, just to remember you, Brunello di Montalcino by law should stay, must stay five years into the cellar before, before going to the market, be released. And uh, by law, we are obliged to age at least 24 months in, in oak. And uh, this means that can be 38, 42. It depends of the winery and the, the choice of the winemaker. In our winery, uh, the idea is understand the wine and understand how much time the wine needs in the barrel. Uh, sometimes could be 28 months, sometimes can be much longer. And uh, it's completely, it's every year different. No? This is part of my role and my responsibility. I taste the wine and I try to understand. And uh, this is why, for example, the wine number two, Brunello di Montalcino Amore Magia 2015, was for 36 months in big cask. It's pretty long time. And um, during these 36 months, I. <laughs> I saw this wine uh, re-ferment and ferment slowly for, for, for a very long time. And this is unusual uh, for, let's say, most of the wine industry. But when you work with wild fermentation, like we do, and, uh, and we leave the wine free to complete and process uh, all the biological pro process by itself, normally it's longer. This is why for two years I get I get very stressful by this wine that <laughs> getting a bit sparkling and moving when the moon changed or when the temperature was growing in the spring and the summer. And um, but thanks God, I we we learned that uh, in this case uh, the only things that we can we can do is be very patient and uh, respect the wine and leave the wine free to do his own, his, his own work. And, um, and this is why, yeah, this kind of very long tail of fermentation, I, nowadays is what I like, I, what I look for in my wine because I have the wine to stay fresher, vibrant and alive because yeah. the life into the wine goes for not just two weeks, uh, like in a short fermentation, but for three, four years and this, very slow fermentation by the yeast, sometimes by some bacteria, refresh the wine continually and help the VA to be more integrated and more vibrant. And uh, in old school Sangiovese, VA volatile is, uh, is so important because it's like the third leg of the wine and uh, gives this the feeling of vibrancy and uh, uh, vertical taste is, is very the, the lifted high tone aromatics. Yeah, that's it. Really jumps out of the glass. Yeah, and uh, in this 2015 uh, is uh, is very very clear. And um, I will say that 15 was a very nice vintage, one of the easier ever because uh, was super consistent without. Uh, extreme uh, weather condition in terms of rain or dry season it was very hot at the end of the, se the ripening season between August and September. This is why it's considered an hot vintage, uh, very generous, very 
let's say Mediterranean, very solar and sunny. And uh, this is why it's rich of feeling, it's rich of body and uh, fruitiness and uh, it's very large and very, let's say charming in some way. And, um, and this vineyard in particular that is growing over clay soil because it's a single vineyard are like four hectare and um, is growing over uh, a very old clay soil rich in limestone and, um, and, and yeah this is the picture and uh, you can see is the is the vineyard with a yellow leaf because all the, the vineyard with the red leaf are is not Sangiovese and Sangiovese during the fall turn yellow faster than the other varieties and uh, Amore Magia is uh, for the condition of the soil is never been a vineyard for high quantity of grape but always uh, is always very precise in his own personality because offer always this charming sweetness that is not linked with the sugar because the wine is dry but the full sensation of the of the wine uh, is a is very unique is a taste let's say sweet but is not sweet and uh, is completely smooth and very uh, juicy and uh, and 15 is also vintage that like brunello should be that can stay in the bottle for uh, I hope at least 10, 15 years. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's one of our flag wine because uh, this vineyard is always been vinified and aged by himself and bottled by himself because of the condition of the soil. And, and this limestone uh, from some point of view is uh, uh, the key to get the wine richer and uh, saltier and more juicy but at the same time is very stressful for the vines that are normally under uh, struggle condition and they don't produce too much and they're pretty weak and they do very little fruit because they don't make this abundance of fruit but very little berry with so when you're when you talk about uh not a lot of what what are your yields like in this vineyard are you talking about two tons per acre or or you said the yields also vary um, yeah. so i guess what's the high side and the low side of what you're going to get out of this vineyard montalcino works between uh, seven and eight tons per hectare that uh, is about i will say 2.5 per acre so yeah yeah okay and uh here by average in Poderele Ripi, we are half, let's say 30, 35, 3.5 tons per hectare means. Wow, one. okay. And this is not what we uh, force the vine to make because we don't do any green pruning. We don't uh, uh, push the vine is what they can do. Is what wow. they, what no, they can no green harvest. No green harvest. We, wow. It, because all our work into the vineyard is uh, focused and on the harmony. And harmony for me is, uh, let's say, a compromise between the vine and the place and the soil and the weather. And uh, I'm helping my, our vine to find this balance, this harmony. And uh, this results in a specific quantity of grape that is what the, what the vine can make. And uh, in our place with this condition, we, the, the balance is around 3.5 tons per hectare. And uh, I don't wanna change this balance because it's, it's the expression of the place. Sure, sure. So, so real quick, I just wanna uh, show everyone the label. Um, and then uh, Amore Imagia, what, is the, what does that translate to? Is that love and magic? Preciso, yes. It's, yeah, what, a, what an amazing name, this is. Uh, such a fantastic wine, and and like you said, it's not sweet, but the you know the the ripeness uh, of the Sangiovese and the bright cherry really comes through, and then it's just followed up with uh, just uh, substantial backbone. Um, 
and but the tannins are, are fine grained and, and integrated. The oak is really integrated. It doesn't jump out. It doesn't overpower. You just get the, the true uh, expression of the fruit. And yep. uh, Ed, uh, sorry, real quick. Ed wants to know um, if you want to give them an idea of what's going on with your vineyards this year. Uh, and then I guess we can probably move on to wine three. Yeah, ciao Ed. And uh, yeah, this year is very particular in Montalcino because uh, from the beginning uh, in, uh, in April, we had a uh, bad frost and uh, the frost uh, hit our vineyard and, and strike our vineyard uh, badly. And uh, we lost 50% uh, of the buds and uh, was, was very frustrating. And uh, normally is a very rare, rare uh, phenomenon because uh, I'm in Potere Le Ripi since 10 years and in Montalcino since 13 and I never see seen this kind of violent uh, frost and uh, we hope that gonna be the first and the last and um, but uh, for sure at the beginning of the season the vines have been very uh, disorientated very uh, confused by the frost and uh, some vineyard had vines completely uh, uh, frost froze and uh, frozen and uh, some vines survived with longer trims and this make each vine different no with a big variable and inconsistent vegetation and this is why uh, the beginning of the season uh, was uh, was very hard also because uh, when you have uh, so bad frost, you have to uh, not prune again, but do doing a very precise work of green pruning uh, in uh, into the vineyard. Now you have to certain each trims in order to save only one only the trims with a grape, and it's something you can do only by hand, vine by vine, and uh, uh, it's very you, labor demanding. And uh, now is, 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 uh, the season is, uh, is hot, is dry. Uh, we are waiting, uh, we, are, we, we hope for some rain because it's not raining a lot. And uh, normally during the summer, few rains are what make the potential of the vintage very different, very high could be, or a bit more hotter and drier. And, uh, but the most important time of the year are the last 25 days, let's say from September to up to the peaking, because it's when you, you can really have a slower ripening or a bit more rush ripening uh, if it's very hot and every year is different. For example, the wine number three is from 2013. That is the opposite of 2015. In terms of seasonal trend, because it was very rainy during the winter, we have snow, lots of snow, and a very cold winter, and this is a uh, helpful and a very useful for for the vineyards because uh, uh, clean the environment in some way from the from everything, pest and virus and everything, bacteria, and. Um, and during the spring, so much rain, and after a pretty cold summer. This is why we consider 2000, 2013 a cold vintage. More, uh, let's say more for wine expert, because uh, it's a bit less generous in terms of juiciness and structure and uh, richness, but very defined and very uh, elegant and very linked with the soil with this freshness and uh, this is why um, it's also vintage uh, for me very surprising because uh, it's not has not been uh, so uh, pushed by the media but nowadays between the, <laughs> between the let's say the winemaker in montalcino between the uh, professional people in the wine industry we, we fight for a bottle of 2013 because we know that is normally is, a, is, is surprisingly good. And, um, 
and, and, and this is why I like 2013. This wine, for example, is coming from another vineyard that is close to Amore Magia. It's just a few meters upper on the, on this, on the slope, but is a uh, turn to east, not to south. And uh, the vines are growing uh, in a different way because we have higher density. We have uh, more than 10,000 plants per hectare. And this means that the vines looks like a bush, like a small alberello uh, vine growing. And, um, and this vineyard has also a different soil because uh, being a bit higher, we are not anymore over heavy white limestone clay, but we are over red clay that is uh, richer in iron and granitic, that is a typical rock, rocks. And, um, and, and in this kind of soil, normally Sangiovese uh, get very, let's say, elegant, bit irony into the mouth and salty. And this is why Lupia Sirene, we always keep this vineyard uh, alone during the, the aging and during the, the fermentation and bottle uh, by itself. And, um, and, and normally are, is a very short liter production. We are talking about 6,000 bottles. It's a very limited production. And normally is released like Reserva, Brunello di Montalcino Reserva. Means not just five years, but one year longer. And uh, it's like the best expression of our vineyard. And this single vineyard, uh, like all our wine is made in the same way. We we do wild fermentation in, uh, in big cask and uh, lots of pumping over like uh, the traditional ones in Montalcino. Uh, very long maceration along uh, 50 days. And wow. uh, yeah, yeah, because Sangiovese is low, as I told you, it uh, needs time with the skins, needs time to ferment, to defer do complete the fermentation. And this is why uh, we have this very long fermentation. And, uh, and normally goes for, for big cask for a pretty long time, about uh, 48 months. Uh, and is, uh, is, uh, is a lot because uh, there are many, many years of tasting and checking out to the wine. And, um, and this Lupia Sirene bottle like Reserva normally has this personality of like uh, one of classic Brunello, very, very slim. When you look at the wine, seems something light, but when it's in your mouth, it's very tasty and very intense in what you can feel. Uh, of course, wine in Montalcino are complementary of the food. This is why for my personal taste, uh, Brunello, our Brunello, our wine are uh, offer the best experience when they play with food together with a tasty food and they it's a, it's a wine able to be gastronomic in some way no it's a it's one of the essence of montalcino because uh, uh, in montalcino we never stay at the table uh, with just wine or just food we need both always and um, why did you take so long for Amore Magia to produce Brunello? <laughs> no, uh, when we, we start, because Padre Le Ripi started in 97. And uh, up to 2015, Amore Magia was a wine made from the same vineyard, but both like Rosso di Montalcino, not like Brunello, because uh, it's a bit complicated, like everything in Italy, but uh, we have a system of regulation and license to make Brunello. You can have the best vineyard in Montalcino, but without the license for Brunello di Montalcino, you cannot bottle anything uh, with Brunello on top of the label. And uh, this is why for many years we had the license for Rosso di Montalcino on this vineyard. From 2015, uh, we upgrade this wine being uh, a lot, unfortunately. And uh, we decide, okay, this wine, uh, this vineyard always is always great, and is one of our flag wine. Uh, we have to find a way to 
bottle and label this wine like a Brunello di Montalcino, otherwise uh, it could be a, a shame no? for, 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 for the wine himself. And, uh, and finally he became a Brunello. And uh, these Amore Magia and Lupia Sirene are our most important wine uh, in terms of uh, traditional Brunello and Sangiovese. And uh, I like both because uh, I want to underline difference. I don't want to build up a style or a signature by the winemaker into the wine. I, I, what I look for is personality and the freedom. And when a wine has personality and freedom to be himself, for me, is uh, I'm happy because uh, I feel like uh, we did a great job. Excellent, excellent. Um, and so, yeah, so just going back to the uh, uh, Lupe Serene, uh, can you tell us what that name translates to in English? It's Wolf and Merrimate. Excellent, excellent. And, and do you make a Reserva every year? This isn't just a Reserva, it's a single vineyard. Yeah, it's a single vineyard, uh, but we don't do every year. Uh, okay. And then that, uh, we do the same single vineyard, but release not like a reserva when the vintage is not perfect. Sure. Not perfect. Let's say different, no? Because it uh, doesn't exist, exist perfect vintage. But for example, in 2014, uh, a very cold vintage, very rainy with a, a difficult ripening of the grape. We decide to, because the 14 from this vineyard was incredible feminine and elegant, but not structured enough to be a reserva, we bottle like a single vineyard, regular Brunello. Excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, and uh, just let me know for all of our panelists if you have any other uh, questions you wanna ask uh, Sebastian um, and we can start covering those. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more about uh, enjoying vintages uh, sometimes that are not necessarily the ones that get the highest scores because they are, as you said, the, the best with food and uh, just, you know, really express the elegance. That's that's something that we see here in, in Napa as well. Uh, sometimes the the vintages that don't get all the big scores are the ones that are, are ready to drink and, and the most enjoyable. Yeah, Montalcino, one of the difficulties of Montalcino is uh, we talk about Brunello without saying anything about uh, the location of the vineyard, because wherever you are in Montalcino, you can do Brunello, but there are very different for very big difference because for example, where we are located with uh, our two Brunello in Castelnuovo de Labate has a specific uh, climate condition and terroir and its position and it's, and it's completely different than a Brunello from the West or from the North or from the South. And this is why a good vintage on the south could be uh, difficult on the north or the opposite. You know? It's just a matter of why Montalcino is complicated for the wine lovers, because you have to know a bit the producer and where they have the vineyard and like observe studying the producer through the years, tasting the wine year by year in order to understand uh, the, how the work is made. Six time. So have you, uh, how long have you been with Poderia Le Ripi? 10 years. 10 years, yeah. okay. And have you worked a lot of other places in Montalcino? Have you worked uh, anywhere else or around the world? I, st I worked in different places, but uh, in Montalcino, I had the, the, the opportunity to, to learn the handcraftsmanship and the, the idea of artisanal wine, natural wine, something very, very difficult to, to learn at the school or when you follow a wine program. And uh, here in Poder de Rivia, I understood the, the value of the land, the value of the uh, experience and the sensitivity, uh, all important factor for a wine like Brunello that's aged a very long time in the in the cellar and uh, tell us about, okay because i'm crazy of uh, orange wine and uh, white wine made with skin contact we also have uh, orange wine it's a very limited production less than 4000 bottles 
and uh, it's, it's nice because uh, when you are over uh, a beautiful uh, in a beautiful region, wine region, uh, if you <laughs> if you want, you can do many stuff. You have to understand the place. Maybe don't have expectation uh, that are not uh, uh, let's say. Uh, in line with, with your soil, with your climate, because I cannot do Riesling in Montalcino. But uh, when <laughs> I decide to do uh, this uh, skin contact white wine, uh, we decide to be focused in native grape and finding the way to balance the lack of acidity because it's hot in Montalcino with the extraction from the skins. And, uh, and now we have this wine that <laughs> is strange because people come uh, to Podere Le Ripi sometimes for the for this wine first and for the brunello but it's just a, it's just a joke you know it's a it's a funny wine for for yeah and uh, and guys when you want to come to montalcino when it's a lovely town and uh, a very special wine region uh, everything is uh, is, uh, is so close and you can tour five different exposition, soil and climate and style of wine in a few kilometers and uh, understand this old wine world of uh, farmers because uh, Montalcino is farmer, farmer first and winemaker. Sure, so, so Sebastian, speaking of uh, visiting Montalcino, I know we have uh, Dave Parker, the CEO of Benchmark uh, on the line and he wants to, uh, I know he's been to the property and has nothing but amazing, amazing things to say about it. Uh, Dave, do you want to chime in? Yeah, I sure do. If you can hear me. Oh, we can. Yeah, thank you. Sebastian, good to see you again. Oh, ciao, mister. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm back in the U.S. speaking to you from the benchmark offices here in beautiful Napa. Hey, um, so two incredible uh, experiences that I had during my visit that you haven't mentioned yet are looking at the bonsai vineyard and what you produce there, as well as your golden dome and your winemaking techniques and how those all fit into the, the biodynamic uh, thought processes that you've brought to this winery. Yeah, speak yeah. a little bit about those. Yeah, it's, Podere Le Ripi is very unique because uh, being a producer, a winery, a winery born, uh, recently, because uh, we are talking about uh, something more than 20 years ago, um, we we were we have been very uh, let's say open mind, no? And and for example, because we really trust in deep roots, uh, we did this vineyard with very high density because when the vines are close to each other, they compete for the soil, they compete for the space for the space. And they normally push down the roots into the soil, crossing different soil layers, and uh, having uh, the better link with the with the soil. And this reflect into the wine for sure. And this is why we do this uh, one hectare of bonsai vineyard, where where we do less than seven hundred bottles is our most important pure Sangiovese. And uh, it's a it's a big 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 commitment into the vineyard. And at the same time, this, this cellar looks like a spiral, you can see in the picture. And uh, the spiral is a very uh, important shape in biodynamic and we can work by gravity. We, we can get in with, with, a, with a grape and get out from the bottom with the wine. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's particular. If you will be in Montalcino, I, I hope you're, you're going to visit for the Relieve because uh, it's, it's particular. It's a place uh, difficult to describe, but uh, it's full of energy, full of nature. I'm part of a team of 24 young uh, guys, 27 years uh, average, and uh, it's a very, it's a very nice uh, experience. Well, I'm, I absolutely get the full of energy, the whole property and the whole thought process. And you yourself are incredibly full of energy and it shows in the wines. I think biodynamic to me was always organic, taken to a religion level almost. And the wines 
any biodynamic wine seems to have a life to it in the mouth and in its aging that just other wines don't have and it really shows in your wines. So it was an honor to visit. I'd recommend a visit to anybody that's really interested in the region and what it can really do. And certainly uh, congratulations to you and your team for a fantastic job. Thank you for visiting, visiting us. And uh, I can't wait to come and visit uh, your region and uh, California. Napa's waiting for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope so. Okay, well, uh, looks like we're ready to wrap things up. Um, I would just like to say, you know, I really enjoyed seeing the wines again. I've served them in restaurants that I've worked at for years. I think the, uh, I think in five years from now, we're all going to look back and be amazed at how inexpensive the wines are now and wish that we had gotten a hold of them you know, when we had the chance, they're super small production, um, but they are available at Benchmark. Um, we just want to say thank you to Sebastian and thank you for everyone who joined us. Um, and also let you know that next week, uh, we're going to be joined by Chris Blanchard of Opus One and Michael Salachi, the winemaker as well. Um, so uh, stay tuned and come back for that. But thanks again to Sebastian and uh, let us know when you're coming to town. We'll roll out the red carpet. Ciao a tutti. Ciao from Montalcino. Ciao. Grazie mille. Grazie.